Hello and welcome to the episode 254 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we get a lot of studio sessions, three concerts, and the start of the filming of Magical Mystery Tour. 11th of September 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed another six hours at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany, before going back to their dingy accommodation in the back of the Bambi Kino Cinema. In 1961, the Beatles were instead engaged with a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Pete Best was still on drums, while Paul McCartney had moved to bass duties. 1962 the Beatles travelled to London for their third recording session in Abbey Road. Producer George Martin was unhappy with the material recorded previously – see episode 157 and 247 for more info on that – and decided to take no chances this time. Thinking that the weak spot of the band laid in its rhythm foundation, Martin hired session drummer Andy White relegating Ringo Starr to Maracas and Tambourine. The band recorded three Lennon-McCartney songs in Studio 2, from 5 to 6.45 pm. Ten takes of P.S. I Love You, which was the main candidate for the A-side of the single, eighteen takes of Love Me Do, and one take of Please Please Me rearranged by the band after Martin's specifications, with a faster pace and some vocal harmonies. Martin's assistant Ron Richards was initially in charge of the session, with George Martin arriving midway through. At the end of the session, Martin selected Love Me Do as A-side and P.S. I Love You for the B-side of the band's debut single. Both songs were mixed down in mono before the end of the session. Again, George Martin proved to be able to make an orthodox decision trusting his guts, spending so much time and effort with three recording sessions to get the debut single of a band was pretty much unheard of in the early 1960s. History would prove him right. Fun fact, the initial pressing of the single featured the 4th of September versions of the songs, with Ringo Starr on drums, but later, these were substituted by today's recordings, with Andy White on drums and Ringo on percussions. Another recording session one year later, in 1963. The Beatles were again in the Studio 2 in Abbey Road, in London, to record further material for their second album, with The Beatles. Between 2.30 and 6.00 pm, the band recorded one take of A Wanna Be Your Man with Ringo Starr on the main vocals two takes of Little Child and 14 takes plus one of a dub of All I've Got To Do. In a second session, running between 7 and 10.15 pm, after break for dinner, the lads put down five takes of Not A Second Time and four of the first George Harrison solo composition, Don't Bother Me. You, instead, should feel free to bother me with any comment you have about the podcast. What do you like? What could be better? Drop me a line and let me know, so that I can improve on my work. And since we are at it, you can visit www.simonmas.com support and see what you can do to further grow our community. Thank you! 11th of September 1964 The Beatles reached Jacksonville, Florida in mid-afternoon. They were scheduled to appear at the Gator Bowl, but they refused to do so until they received assurance from the local promoter that the audience was not color segregated. Another problem was the presence of a group of cameramen who had followed the fabs throughout the tour, filming and recording each concert without authorization. The band's entourage had tried to do something about it, but today matters came to a head when the police was asked to intervene, after Derek Taylor was forced to come on the stage and rally the audience for the police to do something about the situation, since the organizers had turned once again a deaf ear to the band's pleas. 
The performance went on smoothly as planned, except for about 9,000 of the 32,000 ticket holders, who couldn't reach the venue due to the damages caused by Hurricane Dora. Also today, NEMS Enterprises brought a shelf company called More New York Limited on behalf of George Harrison. For those of you who don't know, a shelf company is a company that was created and left inactive. The purpose is to resell the company to someone who intends to put it to good use, but prefers to do that to creating a new company altogether for whatever reason. Such was the intent of George, who turned More New York into Harrison's Limited, his music publishing company. Three years later, in 1967, the filming of the new Beatles film, Magical Mystery Tour, started as scheduled. It all began with five days of shootings in the West Country, with the Beatles and a host of actors and extras, friends, friends of friends, relations, fan club personnel, etc., riding the glorious yellow coach. The quality of the organization was to be clear from the very start. Paul McCartney had decided that the starting place of the Magical Mystery Tour was to be Alsop Place in London, a place where most packaging tours started, including those featuring the Beatles in 1963. The departure was scheduled at 10.45 am. Unfortunately, the yellow coach was two hours late, because it was still being decorated with a colorful Magical Mystery Tour logo. After stopping in Virginia Water, Surrey, to pick up John, George and Ringo, the coach navigated the country roads leading to the Pied Piper restaurant in Basingstoke, Hampshire, where the crew stopped for lunch. With no motorways available in that part in 1967 England, it took the coach a while to arrive to the Royal Hotel in Tainmouth, Devon, a task completed in the late evening. The Beatles had to dash into the hotel because 400 local teenagers were waiting for them outside, despite the convoluted procedure for the booking to hide their presence. Inside, Paul McCartney was forced to give an impromptu press conference to discuss the shooting plans for the film, while assistant Neil Aspinall had to face the second of several unexpected Magical Mystery Tour production problems, changing the room arrangements for the big crew, keeping in mind who didn't want to share a room with who else. Later, John Lennon, Neil Aspinall and technical director Peter Theobalds met to discuss the work to be done on the next day. There was only a loose script, no written notes on the shooting sequences, nor any storyboard for the film production. Everything was left to chance, thinking that later assembly of the resulting film would have achieved an enjoyable result. Today's trip produced footage for coach and restaurant scenes. Moving on to 1968, we find the Beatles at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, between 7 pm and 3.30 am. The task of the day was to record the rhythm track of a new song, John Lennon's Glass Onion, whose lyrics were filled with references to other Beatles songs of the 1967-1968 period. The task was rather laborious, with 34 takes completed. Take 33 was deemed the best. Let's close the show with another EMI Studio session, taking place on the 11th of September 1969. John Lennon asked assistant Malcolm Davis to make a new stereo mix of What's the New Mary Jane from the 14th of August 1968 session, see episode 226 for that. Since the Beatles hadn't released the song, John was considering the possibility to turn it into the next Plastic Ono Band single. The matter was assessed today, between 2.30 and 5.30 pm. And with this, we can close shop. See you tomorrow for a sudden and incredible change of heart. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. 
Simon Mas, music you love.